said the only time that he has sex with his girlfriend is when the girl is on her menstruation because they are trying to protect each other from getting pregnant so do you guys have any suggestion or answers to that okay i think um we should also understand the health aspect of menstruation we've been talking about menstrual products we've been talking about everything but the start is do we really understand what menstruation is do we understand when we say menstruation what is the definition of menstruation it's not like i'm throwing this question to the tables and chairs i'm asking all of you what is menstruation <laughs> yes Can I have your answer? Can I have his answer? <laughs> what I have been taught about this text, menstruation is the monthly discharge of blood from the womb to the brain. Now, the problem here is these two questions are right, but they are not right. When we talk about menstruation, a lot of times what we learn from primary school to junior school is that a particular cell or an egg is discharged and once the egg is not fertilized in the womb, it comes out as blood. But unfortunately, that particular egg, what we are also taught in grade 7, grade 8 is the egg is a cell, right? We're also taught in grade 7 and 8 that the cell is not, is not visible to the naked eye. So how can something that is not visible to the naked eye, and if you should place it on your finger, it would fit, bleed for four days to five days? Does it make sense? So basically, when you are menstruating or when you are about to menstruate, your entire body is preparing for reproduction. Your entire body. I'm saying this because menstruation, the reason why all these other symptoms are happening is because your body was prepared to have a baby. This is why you have your headaches. This is why you have your back pain. This is why you have the cramps and everything else. Your entire body was preparing to have a baby. This is why the breasts as well are heavier even before menstruation because your entire body is pumping and ensuring that your body is fit to have a baby because an egg is released. So basically your temperatures are higher. Your body temperature is higher. Your body is reacting, your hormones are reacting, everything is just going out of the normal set, stay, uh, state to a state where it's preparing to have a, a baby or preparing for reproduction. Now, once that egg is not fertilized, that particular state your body is in, it has to now turn back to this particular stage, which means you would have mood swings because your hormones are now trying to balance themselves. This one would overshadow the other one. This one would overshadow the other one. This is why you are having mood swings. Because the body is moving to its normal state again. The blood that comes out is the lining of the womb. Once your body is preparing to menstruate, if you are going to check your body days before you menstruate, this side of the womb is actually thicker. It's very hard as if it's a pregnant woman's belly because the womb is being lined up by blood to ensure that it can support the fertilization process and the baby. So once that egg hatches, once that egg does not fertilize and it breaks, that blood around the lining of the womb is not needed. So in as much as the womb is cleaning up, that blood is not needed, that entire blood forces itself to come out, that is your menstruation. So menstruation is not that entire statement of, a monthly flow of blood, it is more than that. So this is why I said you are correct and you are not correct. Because it's just a haphazard answer. It is way more than that. The lining of the womb comes out as blood. But the reason why you have cramps is because the lining of the womb is forcing to ensure that that blood comes out completely. We are talking about cramps, but we are forgetting vaginal cramps. The vagina pains as well. Once this, this, this blood is coming out, it contracts. 
to ensure that the blood comes out your entire body pains you have back pains you have headaches so the entire body is moving from one state to another now to answer that question i hope i said all of this so that you can know the health aspects of menstruation why it's actually placed at that particular time so this is the reason why people say oh because the egg is already it's already released and and it's broken i cannot get pregnant when i'm having sex during my menstruation the problem is the egg is released and the egg is not fertilized it's now coming out the, the, the lining of the womb is now shedding you have blood coming out but then the body can actually release another egg during that process and once you are having sex during that process the first egg actually broke but that does not mean that the second egg cannot fertilize even if the body does not release uh, um, uh, release an egg at that particular period if the ovaries don't release, release an egg at that particular period, the sperm can live in the body up to three days. So if you have sex at a particular period, if you're having sex at the end of your menstruation, I'm not saying even at the start of your menstruation, you cannot. I'm giving two instances here. If you're having sex at the end of your menstruation and the sperm still lives there, it is in the womb, and the, an egg is released right after your menstruation, it can get fertilized. So having sex during menstruation does not guarantee that you will not be pregnant. So basically, you're also advised to use condoms when you are having sex during menstruation because it, it actually exposes you to infections. So since the vagina is opened up so that blood can actually come out, the vagina does not stay in one shape. For those of you men, let me explain this. The vagina contracts and expands at different periods during, the, the, um, during a girl's cycle. And let me say this, sometimes uh, some of these health personnel would say a female is only, is only normal one week of a, of a month, which is true. Because once you're ovulating, your hormones are actually higher than normal. So sometimes you find yourself, you're super excited than your usual self. So once that ovulation is done, you're back to that normal stage, it lasts for only one week. Then you're going into menstruation, mood swings all over. After menstruation, it's not like, some, for, for some of us, it's not like you're going to your normal state. You can just be sad. That is why you have females who will just sit down and imagine somebody has died and they will cry. It's an imagination. It's the mental state. So we need to understand the entire health surrounding menstruation before you actually go into having sex during menstruation. In fact, even before you have sex, you need to understand your body and you need to understand the body of your partner before you have sex. Sex is not something that you just wake up and do. It happens a lot. So sexual, sexual education, sexual health, these are things you need to know. But having sex during menstruation does not guarantee fertilization would not occur. It can occur and you might have a really beautiful baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to add um, small to that. Um, I think I am glad that Loka was able to talk about all these things because we didn't have the opportunity to. These are very important points uh, that people um, have to know about. So um, just to add on your heart, and I definitely give you the Okay, my question goes to that lady, the one who says that uh, she, ha she used a part that she was not comfortable with. What is the name of the part? And the other thing is, what is, is it type 4 or what? And how does it look like? Type 4, right? Oh, okay. How does it look like? And how long can it stay in the vagina? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. <laughs> you yes, so the part, um, I can't remember the exact name, but. Um, Yes, also because of um, some regulations when it comes to um, products. Um, when I say the name and whatever I thought um, is associated with that, I can't be sure <laughs> when I am I'm not sure of what exactly it is, right? But also when it comes to um, tampons, tampons are like, uh, um, they're like ropes, but they're like ropes that are covered with cotton. Cotton. They're like kind of long. They have the design of a small penis. 
You understand? So they're like kind of um, long and they have a rope. So you, do you have? Okay, um, I think we should have brought um, some samples. Unfortunately, we didn't. But when you search on the internet, you will see um, about tampons. So you, you can insert it. So people will tell you um, when you are tired or you, when you are virgin, you cannot use tampons. And I think um, Elsie made mention of that in her speech. So it depends if you're comfortable. In the Gambia, it is only a few people that use tampons. But in the West, most of them use tampons. They tell you it's the most comfortable, comfortable um, material when it comes to menstruation. So when you insert it in, um, in your vaginal opening, um, you have to also know how to insert it, right? Sorry. <laughs> so when you insert it, the rope is left out. The rope is left out. So it absorbs all the, the blood that comes, um, that is supposed to come out, right? The tampon, when you use it, it absorbs the, the blood in, um, um, throughout. So when you feel like the tampon is filled, you can just pull, use the rope and pull it out Dispose it. This dispose it correctly. Dispose the tampon and do another one. So for the hours, I I am not sure, but I am maybe um some of them three to four hours. Okay, I'm just told you can also use it for three three to four hours. Um, you would use a long pad when you're in your menstruation, when you have a heavy flow. That is um, also, you have to be careful. So four to six hours would be okay for someone with a light flow, but someone with a heavy flow, maybe three to four hours, you remove it. But like she said, it's also one of the very um, effective ways of managing your menstruation. And many people like it because you can use it when you're going swimming. Because it's, it goes directly into your vagina and holds yeah. it. It's not like parts that it waits for it to come out, then it holds it. So, yeah, that's, that's I, I hope we answer your question. You can use it for four to six hours if you're on light flow. Thank you. So, on the, on the issue of the the sanitary pad that was scented. Sometimes you see a sanitary pad that the cover tells you it has perfumes. So those are the type of sanitary pads Zahra was trying to explain. Most times you actually look at the sanitary pads and you feel it gives you, a, a, um, it actually has perfume so it's not going to smell. It disrupts your vagina because the vagina has a pH level. So once you are using perfumes, this is the same reason why you are not using soap to wash your vagina. We have gone to different outreaches where people use soap, people use bleach, people use clothes, people use whatever. Towels, eau de javel, what not, just to clean the vagina. There is nothing you should use, whether it's vinegar, whether it's, if you want to use custard or mustard or what not, it's not supposed to be used to clean the vagina. Only clean running water is supposed to be used. Even when you are showering with soap, you should avoid soap touching the vagina. It's the same thing with the scented sanitary parts. The scented sanitary parts are going to cause irritation. And whether you feel the irritation or not, it would happen. And because our skin types are different, people will feel reactions differently. This is why you'll have a friend who will tell you, I have used it, but nothing happened to me. You don't have the same type of skin or body. So avoid scented sanitary pads or scented tap tampons or so are not supposed to be used at all. It's harmful to you and they should not be allowed in the country. But as far as, like I said in the beginning, nobody cares that we are menstruating. So please avoid scented cap. Uh, and, and I was going to comment on the hours for sanitary pads and so on. It's also been regulated that um, all companies keep saying 46 hours because it's also used as an advert method. But health-wise, four hours is maximum. So don't go beyond the four hours. Because when you are using a sanitary pad, if you notice if you have gone the whole day with a sanitary pad, the edges of the sanitary pad start changing colors. And sometimes it goes green. 
bacteria multiplies itself every 20 minutes. So if you have bacteria growing on that sanitary pad, it means at that particular point, the, sanitary, the, the, the bacteria is going to multiply. So from every 20 minutes, if it was one bacterium, it's now two. The next 20 minutes, it's four. The next 20 minutes is eight. So imagine staying for an extra one hour, extra two hours beyond the four hours. It's dangerous. The bacteria would go inside your vagina and start cause, causing issues. So please be mindful. Yeah. Yes, any order? Yes, let me give you talk. This is gentle. Good morning, everyone here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, I have a few questions here, but it's so quite unfortunate that the other one is not on stage, but I would like to ask the gentleman. Uh, I want to know in what way can men help, you know, ladies during this period, especially your sister? Okay. Thank you so much for this wonderful question. Thank you so much for this wonderful question. Just like I mentioned before, during when women are seeing their periods, they have some signs and symptoms that the periods come with, like cramps. Cramps are very painful. So you as a man, if you know that the woman is undergoing cramps, you can prepare a cup of warm tea and you give it to the woman so that the woman can drink it. When they are on their uh, periods also, psychologically, you need to be advising them. Tell them this is a natural body function. So it's normal. There is no need of you as a woman, when you are seeing your period, to be stigmatized or when men are making mockery of you, there is no need of you being shy of that. And the other thing is, they are easily irritable. So you as a man, if you know that the woman is easily irritable, if you come to the woman, if you touch her, she reacts some way, otherwise. You should understand that she's on her periods. But if you touch her and she react otherwise, you as a man also, you say, I'm the man of the compound, or I'm your elder brother, or I'm your brother. You also react in a harsh way towards her. That will not help us psychologically. So I think so we can help them in psychologically. I just want to say thank you to um, Modu, right? Modu here. And I want to... Um, a personal experience. I'm so happy to see a lot of men here, especially in this school environment. I'm sure one way men can help is when you see a lady, um, a lady who is stained because of her menstruation, you avoid laughing at her. We've had experiences of men and we looking ah, see that girl and laughing because you know it's a stigma because they are seeing it as something that is bad and is funny that has happened as a man if you have this information that menstruation is normal you see this lady you can walk up to her and say oh you're stained can we go to the hospital or oh, let me give you my shirt to cover you know help her support her and then your brother your sisters in the house if they're on their menstruation it's not bad for you to go into the shop and buy a sanitary pad for her is it it's not bad you can go and buy it for her because it's normal and like he said you can give her you can um, support her with giving her water bringing food and also reducing the amount of work she has to do at home you know if she's having like for me i have very very severe menstrual cramps i would not enter the kitchen during that time not because i don't have to but because i am maybe lying down on my bed or taking my drugs so at that point you see that your sister is going to, is, is having her menstruation you can say okay mommy don't worry i will wash the plates or don't worry i will help her i'll sweep the house that is a way to help and also another very important way to help is through advocacy when you put your voice together with the women and advocate, advocate to the government to uh, make menstrual hygiene pre um, products free, advocate to your school to put um, a, a proper toilet in place that women can have privacy, advocate in your homes about menstruation. These are all the ways you can help women because like the panelists have said, even though it's only women that menstruate, menstruation is, is a concern for everybody. So those are the way men can help. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Like, 
I really want to ask my question, but before asking, I want to say something about this menstruation, if time permits me. The issue is, I live with my elder brother. There is no female in the compound, it's only two of us. But the issue is, before the there, I happened to saw my nurse, what happened is, he took me to the room, he advised me, he told me what to do, from there he went and bought a sanitary pad for me. Wow. It's only this year, wow. it's only this year, I know how much a sanitary pad costs. The previous years, after work, every time in a month, at least twice, he will bring a lot of, lot of sanitary pads. He will advise me, anytime I am sweating or my head, I'm having cramps, what happens is he prepare tea for me and I drink and help me with the house <laughs> So That is the main reason why I am so happy to see some of my brothers here because I know they will not hear all this and allow their sisters to struggle. So now, my question is, did you people normally go down to this junior and uh, lower basic schools to advise them and sanitize them on their, their menstrual hygiene? Because the issue is during our grade six, by then I was small, I don't start seeing my menstruation, but my friends did. So the teacher used to mock them. And the teacher will be like, don't drink from the class bucket. Don't bring bad luck to the class. So if you are menstruating, try and sit at home. So anytime someone is in menstruation in class, all what she do is to cry at the corner. So I think it will be very important if you people go down to the lower basic schools, grade five and six, and advise them about this menstrual hygiene. Thank you so very much. She really have a care in Torah. And I also so care Um, I, I think that's a very important question, whether we um, go down to the lower level to give them information about menstrual health hygiene. Yes, we do. Um, at our organization level, we used to have um, a, a school outreach every Friday that we used to do at schools, most with um, young adolescent girls, um, to talk to them about menstruation. And we didn't stop there. We also used to provide them with um, reusable sanitary pad package um, when we have funds. When we implement our activities, in all our activities, we make sure we include conference package. This conference package includes roll-on, it includes pad, it includes drawers, don't laugh. I know some of you will laugh and say, Kimo. And it, it includes a lot of things that you can use during your menstruation to sanitize yourself or to support yourself. So um, also, our, like I said, we did not only stop in the combos, but we go down to the rural areas because these are people who need this information mostly. Because when you go to most of our communities in the rural areas, you tend to realize that some of these people are um, sidelined in terms of these activities or in terms of information about their body, about their health, about their reproductive health. So um, the activity does not stop at our office, but it goes down to the lower levels and schools as well. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I'll also want to share um, something on that. So the organization I've been work, um, I've, I'm working with um, has been doing a lot of work on SRHF, and menstruation um, is not an, expect, an exception, of course. So um, our work is across all the regions, and we have gone as far as Sarasofi and other communities in the Gambia. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and other communities that are inside, right? to um, talk about menstrual health and hygiene. So I think this is something we have been doing um, since 2010, when the organization was established. And we also have other partners like Mariama here, Loka, and other organizations that are emerging. There are a lot of people that are working on SRHR now. And they do a lot of work on menstrual health and hygiene. And they also distribute parts 
So at my organization, we used to distribute parts. We used to do a part drive where we have um, something small and ask people that come to donate a sanitary pad or money. So we buy parts and part of the girls we mentor, they come to the office to collect monthly and their monthly supply of parts. But there is something we cannot do anymore because parts are increasing every day and now we don't have people donate parts to us, right? But um, I would like to say one thing. Um, as a young woman, this is something you're able to do and if you can afford parts, always have parts in your bag. If it's a way of supporting a sister, I always have parts in my bag wherever I am, unless I forget them at home. If you're able to afford it, always have a part in your bag. You can see in any garden, you will see a lady that need, needs parts. So that is also a way of us contributing, you know, to, um, to the advocacy to end period poverty and also to um, educate each other about kindness when it comes to this issue. Yeah. Just to add on it, I think they've already said much about um, going down to the grassroots, uh, to the rural communities. Um, so the question is whether the communities, whether the organizations are doing their own part. Yes, the organizations are doing a lot when it comes to menstruation. Now, the question is, what are you doing when it comes to menstrual hygiene education? What have you done so far? What can you count that this is my contribution towards ending um, misinformation on menstrual hygiene? I have a hobby of writing on my status a lot on menstruation and menstrual hygiene. So if your status is only to um, put mems the whole day and write motivational quotes, maybe you can change it once a month and have a menstrual hygiene discussion. What you do is educate yourself first, learn more about menstrual hygiene, and also ensure that you are sharing facts on your WhatsApp status. So this is something I do frequently, in addition to a lot of other stuff, but I'm saying this one because this is something that you can do, this is something you can start with. If you have a smartphone, which almost everybody has now, if you do, you can actually start sharing or ask questions on your WhatsApp status and people would re respond. People would share their experiences and we, all your contact lists can learn from it. That can be your contribution to teaching somebody else. Even if people do not respond, but you sharing facts on your status would ensure that somebody learns from it and that person can also share with other people. So your own contribution starts from the little things that you can do. So in as much as organizations are doing their best to reach the rural community, it's not everybody that can reach the rural community. It's expensive, sanitary parts are expensive. You cannot go to a community and talk to them about sanitary parts and tell them not to use racks, which almost everybody uses. We, we did a survey when we did the last part drive uh, in, in March and almost 67% of the people that we gave sanitary pads to were using racks. These are racks like wax or so. And we had another 12% that was using heavy towels, the towels that we use to wipe ourselves. So in as much as organizations are trying to cover that gap, there is a lot of misinformation around the urban area. So everybody's hand must be on deck so that we can all combat the misinformation on, sanitary, uh, on menstruation.